I also have a master's degree and a doctorate degree in educational technology. And I, I think that uh, technology can really help improve learning. And uh, I've, I've worked at that. And those two things are what brought me to the OLPC community. Um, besides that, I'm also a beekeeper, which I learned from my grandfather. And uh, bees are in trouble these days. Um, a lot of bees are dying. There's this thing called colony collapse disorder, which is killing off honeybees. And if you only eat bread and potatoes, that doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But, but if you eat fruits or vegetables or nuts or berries, then, then uh, the fact that bees are in real trouble is uh, important to you and it's important to me as a, as a beekeeper. Uh, one of the things you need to know as a beekeeper is how are your bees doing? Well, it's pretty hard to tell when they're living inside a beehive because they're, they're inside or else they're out flying around somewhere. But one way to know how the bees are doing is by listening. And every beekeeper, when they walk up to the hive, they can tell, oh, they're, they're happy today, or oh, they're angry today, or oh, there's something wrong here. Beekeepers can just tell that just by listening to the sound of their bees. And so I figured, hey, if I could build a system that would record the sound of the bees and interpret that sound and send a message to the beekeeper saying, we're hive 27 and we're okay today, or we're hive 62 and you better get out here right away, then that would be really helpful. It's, I've got a hive on my deck and one in my house that I'll show you a picture of. So I don't need that for, for myself. But if you've got a thousand hives and some beekeepers have 10,000 hives and they're scattered around the country in groups of 50, then then this kind of thing could make a real difference for them. And I've spoken to the researchers who work on colony collapse disorder, and they, they, they can find hives that are OK, and they can find hives that have already collapsed, but they can't find hives that are in the process of collapsing. And so it would be very helpful to them if they could find hives that were in the process of collapsing. And this kind of work that, that, that we're doing could be helpful for that. So that's my personal motivation for this. But I figured, hey, if this is a OLPC, this is essentially software which automatically and periodically captures data. And I asked Shang to write it for audio data because for listening to the hives. But the OLPC has a camera built in that takes pictures and movies. So anytime you're interested, anytime you're doing some science, some experiment, or you're curious about the world and you want to capture data periodically, this would be a good piece of software to have. And for example, if you want to watch how the sun moves through the sky, <coughs> or how clouds move through the sky, or you want to capture what are the birds in my neighborhood at different times of year, or what's the traffic like in my neighborhood at different times of year, anything like that where you're periodically capturing data, this software will be very useful. And Shang wrote something for me, and then Matt has turned it into an OLPC uh, activity. activity. So let me just tell you a little bit more about my bees. So here's a picture of a bee on my finger. Actually, I don't need the laser pointer since I'm right here. But that's my <laughs> finger. This is a bee. She's not too happy because she was, she was kind of sick, actually. So here's some drawings of bees, and here's a, here's a real bee. Just for the heck of it, it turns out that a bee's ears are right in that joint in their antenna. And their noses are down on their feet, and their lungs are kind of scattered along here. So they're they're very different than we are, but they're still interesting creatures. This is my observation beehive where I've been capturing the sounds. So this is in my guest bedroom. This is where I, where I put sugar water in to feed them. There's two frames of bees here. That's, that's what those things are called as frames. In a regular beehive, would have 10 of those frames just for raising bees, and maybe even 20 in, in, a, in a box. And then on top of that would be more, more Short, shallower boxes, but, but more frames for, for uh, the bees to store honey. This plastic tube here lets the bees go in and out the window. Safe to say you haven't had any human guests lately? Uh, <laughs> actually, I have had it. In fact, I've even had people sleep in that room. <laughs> so they're quieter in the winter, and that's when, they, when people sleep there. This is the outside view, what it looks like from uh, outside the house. And that's up about 10 feet over the, over the sidewalk where people come and go. And people hardly ever notice them. Although once in a while, when it's really hot, there'll be a big group of bees out here hanging out. <laughs> and then people will run up and say, you got something on your house? 
<laughs> yeah, I know they live there. <laughs> Here's a close-up. Um, and you can see right in the middle, you can see the queen bee. And she's got a, I'm not sure how the colors work here, but that's a blue spot on her. And that's painted on to make her easier to find. And what they're walking on is the honeycomb here, except it's not really, this is not the part that has honey. This is the part in the bottom of the hive where the bees are raising more bees. And you can see she's got her tail tucked down into a cell there. She is either laying or has just laid an egg that will become another bee. Okay. And right beside it, you can see some, a cell with pollen in it. And the pollen has the proteins and the fats and the vitamins and the minerals that bees need to make bees. Honey is all carbos. That's their fuel supply. And they put that in a separate part of the, of the beehive. Uh, you can see all these bees around the queen tending her, making sure that she's all right, making sure she's got enough to eat, carrying her poop away, spreading the smell of I'm a healthy queen bee around the hive so everybody knows they've got a healthy queen bee. And then in the cells themselves, you can see some bees are down inside. Here's one coming out. Here's one down inside there, you can see. And what they're doing there is feeding the baby bees, the larvae. They're, they're, first they're an egg and they don't need any food for three days. Then they come out of the egg and they, they look like a little white worm, and they grow like heck for about 10 days. And they get fed hundreds of times a day by these nurse bees. And then they, once they get big enough, and I think, let's see, somewhere you can see, no, you can't really see in this projector. You can't really see any just before they're capped over. But then when you see the cells like this that are then capped over like that, inside every one of those, is a developing bee that will come out when they, when they mature. And you notice most of these bees, which are all worker bees, have this black spot on their um, thorax. And that basically tells you a little bit about the age of the bee. These are mature bees. Here's one upside down walking on the plexiglass. But these are mature nurse bees. But look at this one. You see how this one has fuzzy fur there? So she's just maybe a day old. And this one down here, the fur isn't even sticking up yet. That bee is just an hour or two old. There. That's a really young uh, new bee that's just emerged from the cell. Right. So this is what it looks like up close. Right. Here's the way I've set up my audio monitoring system. I've got the OLPC right there beside the hive. Okay. And there's a wire that goes to the microphone. And at the other end of the hive, I've got the microphone here right over this ventilation system which I installed, which is really just a staple holder I got from the office supply store. But it allows the bees to ventilate the hive without the ventil without having to draw air in that or out through that through that long tube. And so the bees hang out there and they, they fan to bring air in and out. And that's that's where I capture the sound that they're making. I also tried putting the microphone in my regular beehive outside. You can see they just first of all they chewed off the wrapper, the saran wrap, and then they stuck it all up with propolis and honey, honeycomb. So they just made a mess of it. So that doesn't work. You've really got to separate the microphone from the bees. That's one of those practical things I learned. Right. Here's what the sound of, I'll play you a real sound in just a minute, but here's what the sound looks like when you display it on a, on a spectrogram or something. I guess that's what it's called. But if you picture this as, if you picture this as a piano keyboard, from the low notes to the high notes, okay? And, and then you picture this as how loud each note is being played, okay? Then you get a picture of the sound. Right? And what I've done is every time I capture, so this was September 27th at six o'clock in the morning, as captured by Shank's program here. And if you look at this for various times a day, you'll see the whole thing moves up and down as the bees get louder and softer. And then various notes get played louder or softer at different times a day. I honestly have no clue what that means, but I know it means something, and it's my job now that I can capture it to figure out what it is. But that, that, until I could capture it, there wasn't much point in trying to make sense of it because I couldn't capture it periodically. But now that I can capture it periodically, I've got some, some you know, more work to do. <laughs> Are you um, seeing anything? Pardon me? <coughs> can you speculate at all? Um, the, uh,